Hi guys, welcome back. This is Nitin and this is my second video in my series of talking about interesting projects that I have been building from more than past one year. And in this video, I want to talk about satellite image deep learning. So basically this project talks about how I, I was able to manage to generate field delineations using the satellite imagery and then build a user interface around it so that user can use it. Now this project is full of challenges and I want to talk about some of those. So the very first and interesting thing that I have to do was to gather the satellite imagery. Why? Because until I have access to those images, I cannot do a lot. So Google satellite images was my go through, but the problem is it, it was not very high resolution images. So uh, I wanted to start with the maximum available resolution for the images to process with. Although I did try it initially with the Google satellite images, but it wasn't very good enough. So I figured out a project, it's called, uh, uh, I mean, there's a GitHub project for this where someone has built a project to specifically scrape a particular area using the start and start and end point of using light long to scrape the images. And uh, the base website in which this project uses, it's called satellites.pro. This is an interesting website and you will find maps from various different providers like Apple Satellite Maps, um, Yandex Maps, Google Maps and a lot of other sources. And uh, based on what the project description says, Apple Maps had the most clear and high resolution imagery available. So they did provide a script so that uh, I can scrape, but the script wasn't very helpful. And uh, particularly one interesting challenge that I had was the satellites.pro website actually uses an access key, which is a temporary key. Whenever you load the page, you will get the access key and then using that access key to fetch the images. However, it will expire after 15 minutes and this script wasn't handling it. So I built my own scraper script using Selenium to load the site whenever key expires and get access key and then using request to generate the URL query parameters and then fetch those images using that access key. I was able to scrape a lot of large areas. Uh, in this project, I mostly worked on the uh, Morocco regions so I scraped images using that website and then uh, interestingly the script also has information about how to save it as a GeoTIFF file so that uh, I will have the CRS information preserved inside the images. Now the next big challenge was to, to generate the field polygons. I have seen multiple projects especially from Sentinel Hub where they talk about using uh, temporal images to combine those together and then using segmentation models like UNET to be able to generate field delineations and then combine these results to get the final polygon output. However, uh, for me, I was using a single image that is from the Apple satellite imagery. So it wasn't helping because I wasn't have um, access to the temporal images. However, um, I tried different approaches because a lot of computers and models are available in the market now. So I wanted to give a try to that. And interestingly, um, the very first model which came into my mind was um, using UNET. So I tried to find already available models and then see if that helps. But Unfortunately, none of the models worked for me because mostly the models was using temporal images as an input, which I don't have. So the next thing was um, trying out SAM. So SAM is a segment anything model by Meta. And the way it works is we can provide some uh, points and uh, the model will try to segment any object which uh, this point uh, is trying to segment. So basically what happens is we provide a set of points, either positive or negative. These are called anchor points. And then the SAM model will try to segment any object which falls onto that point. So uh, the very first challenge here is uh, how do I decide what points to uh, give? So because in a, in a remote sensing of satellite image, there will be a lot of different things like lands, road, buildings, trees. And my use case was to particularly uh, delineate the field polygons, that is the agricultural land. So how would I give those points to the SAM model so that it can segment it? So I tried to use an approach called uh, a clip surgery. This is another interesting project based on top of clip model. What it does is we provide some text prompts and then using clip models, it tries to figure out the areas which will be activated by those prompts. For example, if I say roads, then the clip model will try to find areas where there are roads in the images. And then uh, using these activation maps, uh, I was able to get the points. So whatever area which are activated based on text prompts, I can generate points in those areas and then provide these points to the SAM model along with the satellite imagery so that the SAM model can segment and generate field polygons. 
And interestingly, because Sam also accepts negative points, so I used a combination of prompts like tree, roads, and all of these things, and then computed the points and, and used it as a positive and negative points to provide to the Sam model to be able to generate the field polygons. It was okay, it works, but there was a lot of uh, inconsistencies, especially the fields were uh, segmented properly if it is very clear, but if they are um, like tree or other real mixed up in between, then the quality of segmentation was uh, not very good. So, so the final approach for me was to uh, let Sam decide everything that it can segment and then figure out which of the areas contains fields and then only take those. So interestingly, Sam also have this unique feature called segment everything. Uh, what it does is basically it's called automatic mass generator where you provide some parameters, uh, basic parameters, and then let Sam handles everything. So it will try to segment each and every object that it can see in the image. I tried that um, the results look promising. However, when I try to iterate on all of the segmented polygons, the problem is uh, it's called, so there will be like multiple fields. Let's say there are two fields. So there will be a single polygon mask for um, two or multiple fields. And then there will be single polygon for each field. Uh, basically, Sam was trying to do everything. So not only it segments a uh, polygon for a single field, but also a group of fields. And I wanted to avoid that because uh, I wanted to have polygon for each and every field, but not a group of fields. However, I have no additional information about which polygon belongs to what kind of objects. And this is where my OpenCV knowledge came uh, very handy. So I first of all tried to iterate on masks which was generated by Sam model when this did not work uh, because intuitively it looks good, the images which were generated by Sam, but when you iterate on each and every mask, it would be very different than what you see on the image. Reason being because when these polygons are plotted at once, um, the smaller polygons which, which contain polygon for a single field will always come on top and the polygons which will contain a group of fields will be on bottom. So they will be kind of overlapped by these smaller polygons. So this was exactly what I wanted to have. However, when I iterate, uh, I was not able to figure out which one has the group polygons, which one has the single polygons. So I just took the image output from the SAM model, the segmented mask, colored output, and then used NumPy to figure out all the unique pixels in the images because it will obviously give me the polygon masks. And then I iterated on these unique pixels. Now because the image have overlapped polygons, so when I came across the polygon, which contain a group of fields, because I have already removed the mask, which were for single field on top of that. So these resulting masks will always look like a boundary to the field. And since it does not have a lot of area, I was able to use computer vision approach like erosion and dilation to be able to remove these pixels from the image. And the end result is basically a polygon for each and every field. Although there were still polygons for roads and other areas, but again, because these are very small as compared to the uh, size and resolution of the image. So it was easier for me to filter out. So this was done and uh, basically what I was doing is give a TIFF image as an input and it will give me an output mask of that image, basically a binary image. Uh, the challenges started growing when I have a very large TIFF. Um, so I tried another approach, this is called Sahi. Uh, actually not exactly Sahi, but uh, uh, this is inspired from Sahi. Um, so basically what it does is it chunks the image into smaller parts try to predict mask for those smaller parts and then combine those results. All of this is still happening on image basis, which is uh, generating mask and then combining two images by putting those overlapping images together. So I get a binary mask of a larger TIFF image. And this worked very well, but it is not very usable because when I want to do some sort of processing, I would want it to have in the form of polygons so that I can use it with software like QGIS or, or even GeoJSON so that it can be utilized. But this was a single uh, binary image. Uh, so uh, for a large TIFF image, I was able to use this Sahi approach to do that, but uh, when it started growing for a very large area, let's say for a commune, province, or even a country size, I cannot fit that large amount of TIFF image as a single pass through to the model because it can fit in the memory. So uh, I chunked the larger data into smaller TIFF files. Now each TIFF file already was processed through Sahi approach uh, using these overlapping images, but now we have multiple TIFF files as well. So basically I resolved to handle only one TIFF file at once that is generating the binary mask for those images and then using the raster IO library to convert those into geo package files and then combining these generated uh, polygons, geo package polygons into together using the raster IO itself. Converting the uh, image masks into geo package is also another big challenge because uh, um, this is binary image and then when I try to convert it into polygons, the resulting polygons will have a large amount of points just to define a very simple shape and that is why if my TIFF image has a size of 20 gigabytes then its a geo package file which essentially contains the field polygons will have a size of 10, 10 gigabytes. Now only for polygons uh, and having a 10 GB file it is very large. Also the polygons having so many points is not very efficient to work with. So I worked on it to, to make sure that these polygons are optimized. 
I use some smoothing algorithm called Chaikin smoothing algorithm and also have to convert the CRS into some other format so that it becomes easy to do parameter optimization for that. And uh, the resulting file is like two megabytes only. So for for from moving from 10 gigabyte file to a two megabyte file, that is a very good optimization. And then later I combine all of these geo package files to have polygons for a very large area. This is all about using SAM to, to do field delineations without any temporal images. And uh, once that is done, uh, I have another big challenge coming up. That is how do I make sure that end users can interact with it. Now for uh, normal people, um, like us who can program and write scripts and then use these using QGIS, it's okay. But for a complete new user who just wanted to have insights about a particular area, um, they can't even be bothered to use QGIS to use this because that is again very technical. So my challenge was to, to build a user interface, uh, basically an application so that uh, people can browse through the map, uh, look into the polygons and then uh, a lot of different parameters related to that field are stored in the database that they can access it because this part is not even very easily possible in QGIS because you can utilize the field polygons but not interact with them. So here comes the part. I use Next.js and Fast API as a backend and Next.js as a front end to build a user interface and then I allowed user to browse through the polygons. I use Leaflet, uh, React Leaflet library to do all these mapping in the UI as well as uh, to be able to fetch polygons for a particular area because uh, fetching all polygons is not very a uh, good approach and it will certainly block the user interface. So I use Uber's H3 library, which is a very interesting library where you can convert your polygons uh, into H3 indices. These are smaller hexagons which resides inside those polygons and each hexagon will have a, a hexadecimal index value. So you can convert your polygons into H3 indices and whenever user wants to query polygon for a particular lat long or even for a ROI, you can generate the indices that will fall inside that ROI and then go to your database and then look for those H3 indices to fetch the polygons for. So this was the approach which I have been following and so far it worked very good. The user interface is smooth, it is able to fetch polygons and the polygons are very um, smoothly generated plus a lot of uh, the polygons which has a lot of points and was making the UI hang a little bit uh, after smoothing it out and reducing the polygons points it become very easy to handle. So this was about the satellite image deep learning project which I have been working on. I hope you find the project interesting. The code, I cannot share the code because again this is part of a commercial project but I am happy to talk about all the approaches and the problems which I faced during the development and also share some of my insights about what worked, what did not work. But this is merely a showcase of the project so I hope you enjoyed it and please do interact with the video, add some comments, do like the video so that it pushes YouTube to to show these to more people who are interested in these kind of projects.